The wearing of the daisho. Daisho are two to three swords. The two swords that they wore, and these are my swords, <coughs> are extremely strong and quite, quite beautiful. Now, <coughs> if we have time, I'll get into the make of the sword and what makes it regal and what makes it impressive. This was ray skin. It was a handle wrap that was um, often made of <clears throat> extremely strong materials, sometimes hemp. This, uh, <clears throat> this is the sword guard itself. And there are many different descriptions that were on the sword guard. And the sword itself was extremely light, and the balance was placed right in the center of the handle. So if you, we if you were wielding a sword, you wouldn't feel its length. Obviously, you knew it was there. But all you felt was some weight here, and you were gripping a handle. We'll talk further about that. This was the backup sword. It's called the wakisashi. This is called a katana, sometimes called a dai katana, which means the big blade. The wakisashi was the backup blade because invariably you would get this so it's stuck inside a person, stuck inside two people, sometimes broken off. You would be slicing through a man, and he would be maybe a heavier man, and he would fall. You try to draw your sword out because another two people were trying to kill you, and it broke. That was someone there. Mostly they didn't break. Your backup sword was your wakisashi, and this was a one-handed sword, kind of. You would do your best to stick a second hand on it. The reason why the handle was so short was because you didn't want it getting in the way of your first sword. Your second sword was here, your first sword was on top of it. <clears throat> this is referred to as a tanto, and I brought a really crappy one so we could pass it around. Is that allowed? It's not sharp, right? Compared to what? <laughs> <laughs> compared to compared to those, there's no way. That's that's as sharp as those those swords were as sharp as um, uh, surgical steel. So what people operate with, that's, this is like maybe I don't know, steak knife, steak knife, yeah, maybe. <laughs> How about we pass around with cheap arms? All right. No, so, no, no taking it out. What? What you're supposed to notice with this with this blade is that there's a there's a temper line referred to as a homon, and that temper line is 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 found when you forge a sword. What forging was about was folding and pounding the steel to remove impurities and to add carbon. So you had steel, carbon was added by taking like a rice straw or taking a wheat straw and in between the folds, you'd stick that wheat straw in the hot steel, and then you would fold it on top and pound it. What happened, obviously, was immediately when that wheat straw, or, or any type of straw, when it touched the steel, it would ignite, and leaving back ash and carbon. The plan was to pound out as much of the ash as possible, but allow the carbon to remain. Carbon is what allowed the, the sword to be incredibly strong. To date, to date, and this is very, very strange, but true, to date, we, we as, our, as, as an advanced society cannot duplicate, we can duplicate, cannot improve on the original design of the katana. We've attempted to improve on it for many, 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 many years, and we can't come close. They knew exactly what they were doing. They had a national budget to do it. And when, we, when you talk about skilled laborers, a summer I was trained since age three to kill people. A sword maker was trained since he was a child to make swords. That's all he did, and that's all his father did, and that's all his grandfather did, and that's all his great-grandfather did, and that's all his great-great-grandfather did, and that's all his great-great-great-great. You get the idea.